Hi! Today I'm going to show you how to replace a disk drive on an old Roland MC300 MIDI sequencer with a USB floppy emulator. I'm not going to be reviewing the sequencer itself as you're probably familiar with the device if you came across this video. This tutorial is going to be useful for a number of vintage Roland sequencers, samplers and synthesizers from the 80s. There's a number of reasons to do the upgrade. The floppy drive as a storage medium has been obsolete for many years and is getting harder and harder to find replacement parts in order to keep these machines operational. You may spend upwards of $50 for a used double density Roland drive and another $50 on a box of uh, blank diskettes that you may not even be able to process unless you have yet another PC compatible double density drive to process them on. USB floppy emulator offers convenience and compatibility with modern storage standards. It also removes the only mechanical part prone to failure and adds life to equipment that despite being 30 years old may easily last another 30 considering its outstanding build quality. Instead of PC compatible drives that some of you may be familiar with, Roland went for the more obscure sugar standard found on Commodore computers. That means that your old 3.5 inch PC drive will not work if you plug it into the sequencer. In fact, the different pinout and power draw specifications may destroy your vintage equipment so don't even try it. To make things even more difficult, Roland created a proprietary file system that IBM compatible computers cannot read without the use of special software that only runs on old copies of Windows. For those of you who aren't familiar with vintage sequencers, there are music data recorders that store raw MIDI information and allow users to layer and edit soundtracks in order to produce complex compositions. Sequencers have existed since mid-70s and were popular up to late 90s, at which point general purpose computers began to force them out of the market. Back when most primitive computers sold for thousands of dollars, sequencers offered a somewhat cheaper alternative for digital sound processing. Roland, Akai and Yamaha pioneered many standards that are used to this day and they all had similar looking devices competing for their share of the market. Roland released tens of producer and consumer level sequencers, starting with a semi-analog MC8 in 1977 and ending with MC80 in 1999, at which point they were finally ready to abandon the floppy drive. The floppy drive emulator I'm going to be using with my MC300 sequencer is manufactured by GoTech. It is the cheapest option currently available and the only one that I can personally confirm to be working 100% with Roland devices that utilize 720 kilobyte double density drives. GoTech sells many varieties of their emulators, but only one has the features required for this project. The model is SFRM72-FU-DL. I will post link to it in the video description. The drive has to be able to work with 720k diskette images as well as non-fat file systems. Any device you find that doesn't match such criteria will not function, so the model name has to match precisely. The only alternative to GoTech that I'm currently aware of is manufactured by HXC. It is a cross-platform device that can be configured to emulate various floppy drive standards, but it costs four times as much and takes longer to configure, unlike GoTech, which runs right out of the box. Let's get to work. You will need a Phillips head screwdriver and possibly some thermal paste. Make sure to unplug the unit while working on it, but keep the cable close by for later testing. First, remove the six main screws. Release the plastic cover and move it aside to access internal components. You will be able to test the GoTag drive halfway through the build before installing it permanently. The MC300, as far as I know, uses the same PCB designs as upper end counterparts MC500 and 500 Mark II. The main difference is the amount of onboard memory. MC300 has 128 kilobytes of RAM, while the other two models have 512 and 768 kilobytes respectively, each containing an additional pair of 64 kilobyte microchips. Even though 300 series has placeholders for those extra memory chips, it cannot be upgraded due to inability to process additional address lanes that higher memory capacity requires. MC500 can be upgraded to Mark II, and kits used to be sold by Roland but they are impossible to come by these days, so if you're looking for the best device in the series, go straight for 500 Mark II. The software that all three sequencers use is cross-compatible, but due to memory limitations, running a higher-end operating system on a budget model will cause the floppy drive to run repeatedly as it struggles to contain the software fully in its memory. The added benefit of having a floppy emulator in such scenario is that it won't cause extra wear on mechanical components and won't be producing noise that some people find annoying. I personally think that the sequencer loses some of its magic when modified. It becomes fully digital and completely silent to the point where you sometimes cannot tell if it's working at all. Few words about the GoTag drive and how this model differs from other variations. 
The main difference is that this drive only works with 720k floppy controllers. That is indicated by the SFRM72 part of the product name. A 1.44 MB drive in comparison will have the SFR1M44 markings. The last few letters of the name indicate the interface standard and whether the I.O. operations require special formatting of the USB storage. Here comes the beautiful part. Not only does the FUDL model work with non-DOS disk images, but it can process raw diskette dump files that Roland provides free of charge. Unlike modern Roland sequencers, old ones had no built-in storage and no onboard operating system, relying fully on diskettes for operation. Lose those disks and your device becomes an expensive paperweight. The second feature of this GoTech is that unlike most other models, it doesn't read the images straight off the USB drive. It copies them into internal memory where they reside until either being replaced with a different image or updated by the sequencer itself. And guess what happens when the power is turned off? Nothing. The data stays there, meaning that for the first time you will be able to boot the device all by itself with no removable storage whatsoever. There are some special procedures that have to be followed, but I'm pretty sure that you will get used to them after a few tries. Here we have access to the floppy unit. Let's disconnect the cables and plug in the GoTech drive for an initial power test. All you have to do is carefully pull the data ribbon from the back of the drive, as well as the power connector. There should be just enough slack to let you connect the GoTech drive while resting it on top. If the power cable runs underneath the panel, you may have to pull it over the top and loosen the ties slightly. From that point, you will be able to run the initial check. The LCD screen reveals that no operating system is present, just as expected. We will proceed on to the next step. This emulator is able to store up to 100 diskette images. Not 1000 like some other revisions, but trust me, this is more than you will require in a lifetime. I will provide links to the most essential files. You can retrieve them off Roland website or through the backup links that I will provide in the description. All you have to do now is format the drive as a FAT32 partition through the Windows Manager. That function can be accessed by right-clicking on the computer icon. After you're finished, make sure that the stick is set with a master boot record. Then you will be ready to copy the files. Naming convention is important. The root folder of the USB drive has to contain one folder named IMG720, and inside all the files have to be named as sequential numbers beginning with 000 and having extension .img all in capital letters. With the files I provide, you will have access to a few versions of Roland's MRC operating system, as well as the utility for converting their proprietary music format into standard MIDI files. Next, we're going to do our first OS test, while the unit is still disassembled, to eliminate any possibility of factory defect. Such things do happen, and cheap drives are much more likely to have issues. To test your GoTech, you may want to hold both of the control buttons during a power cycle. The display should show you firmware information and eventually settle on zeros. At that point, you should be able to select the boot image, by which I mean the file that will be copied to GoTech's internal memory. Press the left and the right buttons together 10 times, don't worry if you accidentally miss one of them. Keep pressing until the first character changes to a small b. Uh, the left and the right buttons individually control the middle and the right digit of the numeric display. Those will correspond to the number of the disk image. You are now ready to do a first file transfer. Press the right button and be very careful not to miss it. The right button on this GoTech device downloads files into its internal memory and the left button dumps internal memory into specified .img file on the USB drive. Pull the thumb drive out, cycle the power and wait. If you were to press the left button by accident at this point, it would have overridden the operating system, which is no big deal since you can always copy it back using the computer. When it does become critical is when you begin saving your own songs and transferring files between devices. Then it will be recommended that you save different versions of disk images and alternate between them regularly to avoid data corruption. Success! All that's left to do now is remove the old drive and insert the new one in its place. The steps are simple and the only screw that you have to be careful about is the one on the left holding the power transistor to the metal frame. The component will have a plastic insulation on it, as well as some thermal paste that will have dried out after 30 years. Pry the component carefully and then proceed to remove the rest of the metal bracket from the sequencer. It should take half the time to put everything back together. 
Now it is also a good time to reapply thermal paste to the insulation pad. Remove all residue with rubbing alcohol, and that is it. There is one small mod that I'm going to do to my drive first, and it's up to you whether you want to follow it. Some GoTech models do come with multiple LEDs, but sadly this one doesn't. There is a place on the PCB where the light would go, but the LED is missing. I happen to have a spare red LED laying around, so I'm going to solder it onto the board the same way as the green light. I will drill a small hole in the front to make it visible. We'll offer additional information about the drive activity when it's running. Replace all the screws and the unit is ready for its last power test. The grey plastic fits the overall color scheme even better than the old drive did. There's a slight gap around the edges due to GoTech drive being thinner, but it should be hard to resolve either with bright colored tape or cut out from an old floppy drive faceplate if you can get your hands on one. I'm going to leave my sequencer as is for the time being. The upgrade is complete. I'm going to leave you with some nice mini music off the OS disc. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing more videos about this specific device, or if you want step-by-step -step instructions on recreating original system floppies with the help of an IBM-compatible drive. See you next time!